Hello everyone, my name is Gitika Gorthy and today I am very, very honored to be interviewing a very special space champion, Miss Harriet Hunt. Miss Hunt is a third year aerospace engineering major at the University of Illinois. She became interested in engineering in high school after taking a research and design class, going to an aerospace camp and getting her first telescope, which is really exciting for all of us. She has also been inspired by her parents who both studied engineering back home in Australia. On campus, Ms. Hunt is an active member of the Illinois Space Society and has been involved in different roles, including Engineering Council Representative, NAXA Micro-G Next Detection Lead, and Membership Enrichment Director. In addition, Ms. Hunt is also involved in undergraduate research and is a teaching assistant for two material science and engineering courses. In the past, Ms. Hunt has entered at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center as a SLS um, flight software test and verification intern and at Collins Aerospace as a software engineering intern. She is also a Brooke Owens Fellow and Ms. Hunt will be spending the summer interning for Northrop Grumman as a systems engineer. I'm so excited to be able to talk with Ms. Hunt and like learn about her journey on a deeper level as she is such an inspiring woman. To quote her specifically, she said that in her chemistry class, a boy told her she could never work at NASA and she proved him wrong. So I'm so excited to learn about her journey and inspiration. So welcome Ms. Hunt, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule to conduct this interview. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, before we get into understanding, you know, journey into the space industry in more depth, first, could you share with us what you do on a typical day? What do you currently do and how does it run? Yeah, of course. So I apologize because my internet is so bad, but um, I'm actually working remotely for Northrop Grumman. So I'm working from home. So my day to day looks like a lot of meetings. I'm doing a lot of research on satellites and robotics. Um, this summer is my first summer as a systems engineer. So I've been using a model based systems engineering tool called Cameo uh, in order to like kind of map out um, what this satellite mission needs to do at what time. So I'm working on this mission robotic vehicle, which is a satellite mission that's supposed to be really exciting. It's really cool and I'm working on it this summer. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I think it's so cool when you actually like think of something when you're a high school student and you're actually able to do it and like work on real things. It's super exciting. And so I additionally, I was mentioning how I read that you were part of this ISS program and you have the opportunity to present a device at the International Astronomical Congress in 2019. Could you tell us more about the program and what it was? Yeah, this is one of my favorite things to talk about, actually. So I'm a part of this organization at my school called Illinois Space Society, um, and we feature professional development, educational outreach, and then technical projects. So one of the technical projects that we participate in each year is uh, the NASA-sponsored Micro-G competition. So basically, the competition is challenging students and create a year the we're able to develop a tool which we call Midas uh, and test it at NASA's uh, neutral buoyancy lab in Houston Texas which was really exciting but after the student competition we like totally were not done we could do more we wanted to keep the project going so we actually wrote uh, submitted and were accepted our paper was accepted and to the International Astronautical Congress uh, student competition. So we traveled to DC for a week and were able to present at the conference, talk about the tool, the challenges, all our testing. Um, and we ended up winning the student competition, which was really amazing. Um, it was an honor to speak there. I met Bill Nye. It was super amazing. In yeah, that sounds super, super cool. I mean, meeting people like Bill Nine is like really amazing. And like, I'm glad that you were able to have the opportunity to like go further from just the camp that you guys were doing um, and take it to a further level with your research. I know like you're mentioning how you're doing a lot of research and also right now. So could you like tell us a little bit more of like the, some of the projects if you can of what you're working on? 
So on campus, I've been involved with undergraduate research for a couple years now. And uh, most recently this past year was working on magnetohydrodynamics, uh, which is also known as MHD. I know it's like a big scary word, but um, it's basically the study of plasma. So it's a lot of physics. Um, and my research used to conserve tree vehicle specifically. So it's been a really challenging research project for me as I don't quite understand all the physics behind it uh, necessarily, but that is also part of what makes it really exciting to me. So I've been learning a lot. Um, it's really interesting for me. I don't ever get the chance to that sort. So this is a very unique experience that I've been doing. Yeah, I feel like when you think of like space careers or like research, there's just so many different things that come into it, whether it be the complex math, the physics behind it, or like the engineering aspect, it's just gonna be like really overwhelming. I know a lot of people get scared when they think of space careers, but knowing that like, you know, you don't have to be a super genius in like physics to be able to be a part of the space industry. I think it's something that's really important that everyone should really wrap their heads around. I mean, we always think when we think of space, we think of like Albert Einstein smart. And I think it's important to like, just remember that you don't have to actually be like Albert Einstein genius, but you could, you could still be a part of the space industry as long as you have the enthusiasm for learning, just like you were saying. Yeah, definitely. Space is for everyone. And I am no Albert Einstein myself. So yeah, I 100% can agree myself. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm not like an Einstein either. And I still want to go into the industry. So like I, coming from my perspective as well, I agree that you don't have to be like, you know, a super genius to be a part of the industry. And I've met so many amazing individuals who are doing so much and they tell themselves that they don't, you know, they're not in the physics aspect of things, but they still are in the industry. So you don't have to just go into physics if that's not your strong suit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and so I know you did face this, but did you face any like gender biases or difficulties in the industry or prior to coming to the industry because you were a female that discouraged you, um, you know, really to pursue a track in the space industry or was that never like a obstacle for you? So um, in the industry, I've had a pretty good experience. I have been one of the only women on both of my software teams for the past two internships. Um, but uh, I think the industry is getting a lot better in the classroom, though there are still a lot of challenges that women have to face, especially studying STEM. Uh, I mean, the most basic form, it's kind of funny to think about, but actually at one of the engineering uh, buildings on campus, the quote unquote, women's restrooms are actually men's restrooms with paper signs on the front that say women instead of uh, over the like etched in men sign. Um, and then of course, on the other end of that spectrum, I know that I and uh, many other girls that I study with like boys in the class say oh so and so only got an interview because they're a girl or they only got that job because they're a woman um and I've heard it about myself and other girls in the department so um it's very challenging to kind of ignore that a lot of women actually leave engineering uh in general because they're uncomfortable with the lack of female uh engineers and other women mentors around so I understand that. And uh, I mean, it's terrible to say, but it does still happen. And um, whether people believe you or not, there are still people out there who make those kind of comments. And uh, it's just something you have to deal with as a woman in STEM. It's so sad that that's something that we have to keep in mind as a woman. You know, I feel like we've come so far, um, yet it seems like we're just not there yet where everyone can accept. I'm really shocked to hear that they don't have a proper women's restroom sign. I think that is really crazy. I never would have expected that at all. 
And also, you know, I think there's a lot of people who try to take others down. I mean, I mean, for example, there's also like this whole discussion around like affirmative action for university as well. And they're like, oh, you only got in because of, you know, a certain quality of yours that you know makes you eligible otherwise you're not qualified and I think that's such a wrong thinking like just because you're a certain gender or like a certain ethnicity or your certain background that like that doesn't mean you automatically get into like a certain position or you can like work at amazing companies like NASA you know you still have to have intelligent you still have to be smart you still have to be hard working you still have that drive and passion and so you know it's really sad to hear that that's still happening and it's so strong of you for still continuing like what is your motivation that helps you overcome those like rude comments well one thing that definitely keeps me going is my um relationship I have with other girls in the department I cannot express how much they have helped me you know every time we are so bonded together as not only like girls in STEM, but just best friends. And they really help encourage, we can encourage each other when we receive those comments, you know, we immediately like shut them down. Um, and the other thing is my parents, my mom has uh, studied mechanical engineering and then my dad um, and I are really close. And, you know, they're, we, I always tell them about like the things I hear and what people say. And they're always there to remind me that I'm the best and no one can say anything else about it. <laughs> so it's just important to remember that, you know, you're there for a reason and uh, it doesn't matter what other people think, they go ahead and let them think that you only got an interview because you're a girl, you know, you still got that interview and you are killing it. Yeah, you still, you still, you're the one who got the interview, not them. They're just very jealous and sulking. That's what it is. I think people just try to come up with excuses for why they didn't get something when it means like bringing down other people. And I think, you know, everyone needs to understand like whether, whatever, you know, identification factor you have, if someone points that out and be like, that's the only reason that you have an opportunity, you just have to remember like your worth and value. I think that's so important, you know, for everyone who's trying to go into any industry. And so did you always imagine yourself in the position you are in today? Or did you kind of have some twists and turns in your journey that helped you define who you are today? I definitely, if you had asked me a few years ago, I probably could not have told you that I would be anywhere that I am right now. Um, when I was applying to colleges when back in high school, I actually um, was a bit torn between environmental science and aerospace engineering. Um, so that's something interesting. I don't really talk about that a lot, but I used to run my high school's Model UN and I was really interested in environmental policy. Um, so that was something that was always on my radar, uh, but ultimately, you know, my passion for engineering kind of showed itself during that engineering class that you brought up, the research and design class. And uh, it became clear to me that aerospace is like what I am most passionate about and I can't imagine studying anything else, but I definitely have doubted it. I've doubted myself as many do and people don't like to talk about it, but um, it's definitely real. It's sometimes it's hard to you know say like, this is what I wanna do for the rest of my life or this is what I'm good at. So. It's important to remember that like even the people you see who are you know super passionate and involved they they, they all have doubts too so yeah I, I think that's something that's not really talked about especially because you were saying like sometimes you thought that you didn't know if this was the right track or if this is where you belong. I feel like a lot of high school students have that same dilemma. I know personally, I'm also in high school right now and it's almost like applying to college time. And I know how it is like where you're kind of like, I really like this, I really like this. And luckily, you know, I was able to kind of combine both of my interests together. And I realized it was a real career to go into like aerospace medicine. Um, and I think I just wanna like show that to everyone that you can combine both of your interests together and do something like even in aerospace engineering you could potentially you know in the future go into working around with satellites that capture data around like the environment and like how it how um you know global climate change is changing every year and so you can combine your interests with like environmental science with engineering and so you know i think space is like that's the beautiful thing about it is um, the industry allows you to kind of put all your interests together and develop your own like path i think that's you know that's what i love about it yeah that's definitely true i've never felt limited in that way 
Yeah, definitely. And so how early, because you said both of your parents were engineers, so you probably were exposed to a lot of this stuff when you were young, but when did you identify um, your interest for space? Because you said you were kind of debating airspace engineering in high school. So were there like camps or moments earlier in your life that led you to like airspace engineering? So when I was, I think starting in early middle school, my grandparents would always send me um, like space magazines, astronomy magazines. Um, so that's where the passion for like astronomy and the planets and space kind of developed. Um, and then when I got my first telescope, you know, I could not stop looking at the moon, could not stop taking pictures through it, going out to fields. Um, and then, so I always knew I kind of liked that astronomy side of things. Um, and then it wasn't until midway through high school I realized that, oh, engineering is an option for me. I never felt comfortable with math until maybe a senior year of high school. So I wasn't necessarily the strongest math student, the strongest science student. Um, so it really hadn't occurred to me that I could be an engineer um, until I took that engineering course that you talked about, the research and design. Um, in that class, I was one of three girls um, the teachers were so supportive and I had so much fun building and designing things. I like, it was then I immediately was like, I have to be an engineer. This is so fun. This is my favorite high school class. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's, I think it's really nice. There's always that one teacher or one class that really just pushes us to be like, okay, this is what I really want to do. I had a similar situation in middle school when I, I wasn't really thinking about space as a career uh, until my tech ed class in middle school. And so it was like an engineering and design class. And one of the units was building model rockets. And oh, I fell in love with model rocketry after that. So I mean, like there's always that one teacher or one class or one camp that really motivates people. Um, and I really wish everybody would have the opportunity to like get into it, I think it'd be really cool. Um, and so yeah, that was a really nice, you know, way to show people that you don't have to be amazing at math or science um, as long as you love what you're doing again. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah, and apart from the gender biases, which we kind of talked about, were there other obstacles in your journey, whether it be like a certain class or like a situation in your life that, you know, kind of hindered you from pursuing your passion? And if so, how were you able to overcome those obstacles? So I always uh, love to tell people how I failed my first physics class, first semester, freshman year of college. I... I was actually a really good student in high school. I got good SATs, good ACT scores. I had a good GPA and then college came around and I don't know, I forgot how to study and I failed physics bad. I, there was no recovering, my GPA tanked and uh, it was very disheartening. Um, you know, I, I've talked about this before, but my NASA internship was basically on the line. So I was told that I, they couldn't offer it to me until I brought my GPA up. Um, and so being told that, being told like, you can't work for NASA, we want you to work here, but you can't because you don't meet the minimum GPA was kind of life-changing. I was like, wow, I this is my dream. My dream is to work at NASA and I'm going to make that happen. So I retook the physics class, despite the fact that I was, I was really dreading it. Obviously I had just failed the class. Now I have to go take the exact same class again. I was like, are you kidding me? This is going to be so horrible. Um, and I worked my butt off to uh, get that grade up and, and I did a grade replacement. So the first failure ended up not affecting my GPA and the new grade went into my GPA. So my GPA went up a lot and I was able to get that NASA internship. Um, but there were a lot of times where I was doubting myself and thinking, you know, I told myself, oh, wow, you probably have the worst GPA right now in the whole department. Like everyone in engineering is so smart and I'm like stupid. I was telling myself that I was stupid because I failed a class. And in reality, it's just not true. I'm, I'm like smart and hardworking and it was just a bump in the road. And it's important to remember that even the people you see working at NASA, you know, they've failed classes. They aren't dead. They don't have 4.0s, not all of them. So um, 
keeping in mind what I was passionate about really helped push me to keep going. Um, you know, I told myself, I want to work at NASA. I'm going to work at NASA. I don't care if I failed this physics class. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to work harder because that's what I'm passionate about. That is so inspiring. I have to just first say thank you for sharing your story, your like vulnerable side of yourself, because it's really hard for others to like share their failures. It's so easy to see the outside cover and be like, they're just perfect. I don't know if I could ever be like them, but people like you, you know, you guys share your like failures too. And it helps other students connect because I know like myself and a lot of my peers as well, we go through a lot of like, you know, failures in terms of grades and GPA, which I mean, it was just not a real failure, but I mean, in, in a student life, it seems like the biggest failure ever. And, you know, seeing how you were able to overcome that, it's definitely scary when you're at the moment, but to know that you can come out of it and still be successful, it's just so nice to hear. So, you know, thank you for sharing that, like, you know, vulnerable part of you. I think it's really important for all of us to hear and like to grow from it as well. So thank you. Yeah, of course. And I definitely, the reason I share things like this is because I also found that it's really important to hear from, you know, I've had peer mentors in the past who I would go to, who I'd cry, I'd say, engineering is not for me. I'm like doing so poorly. And, you know, they would open up and say, look, I've like failed this many tests. I've done poorly in this class. Like it doesn't, change who you are what you're passionate about and so I think it's important for me to share that and not you know not pretend to be the perfect student or the perfect like person to look up to but that I'm human and I have my flaws too and that's what makes us good engineers is we learn from our mistakes yeah I mean there's all these amazing quotes and like one of them is all about like how if you have never failed in your life then you're not trying uh, and I think that, uh, you know, like if you're not, if you're not failing, it's, it's impossible. You're going to fall at some point. Um, you know, everything that goes up has to come, you know, it's going to have a fall at some point or it's going to come down somehow before going back up. So I think it's really important to remember, like, it's okay to fail and just like normalizing that it's okay and that your passion is more is so important. So, yeah, I mean, your mentors were absolutely correct. And I'm glad that you're sharing with us today, too. And so, you know, what was key, you know, you're mentioning how you had mentors, but was there a certain like internship, a camp or an experience that really helped you become knowledgeable about the industry? Yeah, I think that, I mean, there's, it's hard to pick just one because obviously it's been a culmination of things. Um, the micro G project that I discussed earlier really helped me. That was the first thing I got involved with on campus. So just as a mere freshman, I had already traveled down to like a NASA center and then like worked on these papers, built a tool, worked on these CAD models. You know, it really gave me an overall engineering view of how a project gets started from the concept, the design, the manufacturing, and then the testing. So I think that was an overall really good um, uh, culmination of all the aspects that engineers need to know. Um, and then also through this club, I talk about this club a lot because it's really made my college experience being a part of this Illinois Space Society is definitely contributed to my success. Um, so we also go to conferences. So I went to this Von Braun conference uh, freshman year and uh, it was in Huntsville, Alabama. So that's where I actually met um, some of the people I would later work with at NASA. Um, and it was just a great experience because I got to meet professionals in the industry. And especially as a freshman, wow, like everyone is so impressive. You're amazed by everyone's like jobs, everyone's careers. And uh, it really like helped me get excited about aerospace and say, you know, this is like definitely, I want to be like these people. Um, and that's helped like motivate me a lot. Uh, and then of course the, you know, the older girls in the club who are, have been great mentors to people like me have helped me. Um, I definitely could not have pursued all my passions without their guidance and uh, help. Yeah. 
it's so nice to have like that support system and like whether it be through a club like a society or um you know through like these conferences where you meet individuals I, like throughout the interview i noticed how you mentioned how like those mentors were there to support you so i think it's really nice if we could all find that type of mentor or like support group to help you during like your troubles as well so i think definitely mentorships is something that we should always look out for. And I think like networking as well, when you go to conferences is super crucial because um, you were saying how you actually met some of the people that you were going to work with. Uh, so that, that's like really cool to think that that's how these different opportunities come along. So that's really cool as well. Um, and so how, you know, cause you have a busy schedule. I mean, from an internship, you know, you're such an active student in your um, university through different societies and clubs and you have to maintain your grades as well. So how do you maintain everything as well as keep up with the rapid change in the industry? Like how do you keep your skills current? Cause I feel like every time I go on like Twitter, for example, I feel like I see different news every single day. So how do you keep up with this rapid change in the industry while also being a student? Well, yeah, I definitely Twitter. I'm an avid Twitter user, and that helps me keep uh, up to date with the news and what's going on in the industry. And then uh, in terms of like skills, uh, I think University of Illinois does a great job at uh, keeping us focused on industry skills that are becoming more and more relevant. So I'd say that the school has a very strong focus on computational methods which is becoming like more and more important as our industry becomes super dependent on advanced technology. So as that continues to grow, um, I think our, my classes are doing a really good job of keeping up with like teaching us proper coding skills, how to actually solve these like current problems. Um, so I keep up with the news on Twitter and then I think that uh, my courses are doing a really good job of keeping up with uh, what's uh, relevant for industry knowledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's actually, I'm so glad to hear that because, okay, so in my high school, we do a lot of like, you know, you, you learn the day before and then you just like purge on the test and you just like do it. And you just like, it's not really like PBL, like project-based learning. And I'm so glad to hear like university is starting to take that model of like applying real world skills. I'm a strong believer that like doing is, or like learning things that actually are valuable to the industry is more important than like, memorizing textbooks so i'm really glad to hear that your, your university is really pushing that forward um and you know i think definitely social media because you were saying you were like a huge twitter user same as well um, i love twitter i think it's a great place to get a lot of information and connect with other individuals like that's how i connected with you so i think um you know social media is a great place uh, to gain more information um in the right if you use it in the right way and so Another question, you know, when you read all of these news on Twitter, I'm sure you kind of have an idea like how the future will look a little bit, maybe some guesses. So I'm curious to hear what makes you excited and what makes you nervous for the future of the space industry? Definitely. So first I'll start with um, like what makes me excited, which is uh, definitely to see the first humans land on Mars. You know, the Artemis generation is now, and I'm very excited by the prospect of the first woman going to Mars. And I'm excited by the SLS project. I'm a little biased because I worked on SLS, but you know, I love the Gateway program. I'm very excited to see what Elon Musk does as well. And I like how more and more recently, um, you know, private companies are working with NASA, and I like to see that development because I think it's really awesome to see this kind of competition growing and this uh not just competition but also working together and so i think we're going to accomplish a lot in the next you know decade um what makes me nervous though is definitely the <laughs> amount of space debris that's building up i think sometimes we tend to forget about <laughs> that whole like um what do they call it the space graveyard you know there's a a lot of space debris, like 34,000 pieces or something like that, and a lot of dead satellites. Um, but luckily, there's an ESA mission that is launching in hopefully 2025 to go and clean up the space. So it's called Clear Space. Um, so that's exciting. Also, there's the prospect for startups and new companies to come in and fix that. So it's also, you know, kind of goes back to what I was saying about too is, you know, 
how can we work towards cleaning up this debris? It's still a space mission, but it's important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was literally, you know, it's really funny. I was like a week ago or so, I was reading how ESA was doing, was like really concerned about space debris and in the work they're doing and how, you know, I think NASA should also really look into like, you know, doing these, removing the space debris out there. Cause I feel like there's just so much harm. Like we shouldn't ruin or destroy the beauty of space and we should, you know, maintain it's like serene environment and not like destroy it. I think it'd be really cool if we could preserve it. So I definitely agree with the nervous part of it, but I'm also really excited with the startup of different private organizations. Not only does that like increase more collaboration and like competitiveness between um, organizations, which allows for more like uh, innovation, but also it allows for more jobs to be in the industry. I feel like, you know, from 10 years from now, we're going to see a huge job growth in the space industry. And, you know, that's how we need to get more. That's why we need to get more people into the space um, industry and like, you know, inspire all these future kids because, you know, there's going to be so many jobs and so many opportunities. So that's really exciting. And so um, my last question for you is what advice do you have for young people regarding their pursuit of a passion in the STEM field, space industry, or really any career at all? Something that you wish you knew when you were um, a middle school or high school student, because you're also very young still. So definitely, I hope this point has already come across, but the biggest thing I wish I knew when I was before I started college was that it's okay to fail and it's okay to get discouraged because it's completely normal and it's completely human. And especially in STEM, it is so easy to get, you know, imposter syndrome and start to think that, you know, you're not doing as well as you need to be doing. But I found that the most important thing is to keep reminding yourself, one, that it's okay to have those feelings and that two, there's a reason you're doing this, you know, just taking all those negative feelings and bringing it back to if you love something and have a passion for it, you will be successful. Yeah, I think that is amazing advice to really wrap up your story, like like the journey that you were sharing with us so far as well. I mean, it really reflects that you don't have to, I think passion overweighs like any other failures that you have or obstacles or, you know, however smart you consider yourself, I think, you know, passion is the number one thing you need to have. So, you know, I thank you so much, Ms. Hunt, for sharing your journey with us and, you know, your exciting future. I can tell you're going to do amazing things, um, you know, working at NASA or even doing a, like a lot more things in the future. So I'm really excited to hear your future journey as well. But thank you for sharing your story with us, um, you know, what's happened so far and the advice, because I know personally as a student myself, I can really relate to a lot of the things that you were saying. So, um, you know, thank you for sharing that with us and kind of giving us confidence um, for taking the next step. Thank you for your time.